Welcome to God Seeker. This is Elizabeth Fulgaro. The current message, it's not like you think. What changes when you become a God Seeker who has now made a commitment to become a Jesus follower? The love of God for you was always there. The care. But with your decision to recognize Him in His role as leader of your life, which is what it means to call Him Lord, you are no longer just one who has always been infinitely loved by Him, but you become adopted as His child. This transition happens when you choose Him. He already chose you before you were even born. But the relationship He wants with you needs your assent. And when you let Him know you want this, this is where He comes and makes His home in you, in a humanly unfathomable way. He takes up residence in you as Father lives in Son and Son in Father. God Most High, making His home in you. Can you imagine it? But this is not just for your benefit, though it also will benefit you hugely. God as God is always, always multitasking. There is no way you can ever grasp everything He is working at all times to do. And the moment you become his adopted child, you also become a vital part of Jesus' mystical body. There, with all the other members of his kingdom organized and deployed into various roles of service by Jesus the head, your life focus and longing now becomes the family mission. You finally are in your life assignment, the reason you are here. God is longing to cause all souls, each and every one including you, to be made whole again the way He designed it to be, through Him, in Him, with Him, compelled and propelled by the Holy Spirit, all souls flourishing singly and together. His kingdom come, yes, God's will be done on earth as in heaven. Isn't this flourishing? what we all want at our core? And, as you may have already learned, there is a spiritual war going on. You are part of the Lord's army. Every God-following God-seeker is. However, it is vital to keep in mind that this is not a battle where the ultimate dividing lines are against people or between them, even though in your daily life, this is exactly how it can appear. No, it's not like you think. Your battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the powers and principalities in the heavenly realms. The source of every attack and battle in this spiritual war is spiritual. This is how it has been since the beginning of time. Indeed, near the beginning of the history of humanity, it was a temptation placed before Adam and Eve by an evil spiritual force, the devil, which led to their decision to turn from God. This force is definitely less than God, but also definitely more powerful than humans. Adam and Eve did use their wills to agree with the turning away from God and choosing to try to live a different way than His. So the decision was ultimately their responsibility, and it took their lives dreadfully off course. But there was a spiritual force greater than they suggesting it, offering it, with the objective to do exactly this so they would lose the contented, fully satisfying lives in and with God for which He created them. It is the same for you and every other person. The spiritual enemy of God is also there as your enemy. He is against you and not for you. St. Peter says that this enemy prowls around like a lion, looking to devour you, to work through the lives of those who willingly or unwittingly let him to ruin and make harder and more unjust life for many more. Therefore, ultimately, in all our battles, we are not fighting people, but against this darker supernatural spiritual force and his minions. This is the power which lies behind all ungoodness and evil, making it worse and more difficult to eradicate and stop. Thus, at its most comprehensible, 
it would be expected that in this fight, the weapons of our warfare are and must be rooted in the power to bring down those strongholds, these fortresses of wrong, unhealthy ways of living and wrong thoughts which are constantly around us, tempting and menacing, rooted in God's power, because only God is greater. Important is also to recognize and never forget that this means ultimately the battle is not against the one next to you, but for him or her. The foundation of every victory and expression of love for the other, not hate. Like God, therefore, you must be for the one who presently seems like an enemy, not in a manner that supports what is wrong, furthers what is wrong, or is complicit in it not in a manner which turns a blind eye and doesn't want to get involved or see, but in the manner which stands according to the love and will of God in the battle, looking for what is right in God's eyes and taking the steps as he leads to enact this while simultaneously understanding the real battle is not against the person next to you. You can only do this when you are completely leaning into God for his insight and wisdom regarding what to do and when to do it. St. Paul described it this way in his letter to the first century community of Jesus followers at Ephesus, which was on the western coast of what is now Turkey. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 through 13, St. Paul said, In conclusion, Be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him, that strength which his boundless might provides. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy-armed soldier which God supplies, that you may be able successfully to stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. Therefore put on God's complete armor, that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger, and, having done all the crisis demands, to stand firmly in your place. But in the knowledge that the battle behind all things has supernatural roots. You are not afraid, because you have come and are coming to know the sovereignty of God, and because you are learning enough about him to know increasingly that for which his heart beats. You also know what St. Paul says in his letter to the first-century Roman community of Jesus' followers is true. We read in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 38 through 39. For I am persuaded beyond doubt, am sure, that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things impending and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Listen to the song, Dress Me in Your Armor, from the Godseeker album. You can find the song Dress Me in Your Armor on my YouTube channel, iTunes, various other streaming services, and always on CD. Godseeker messages are sponsored by Eagle's Nest Foundation. Until next time, this is Elizabeth Fulgaro. I am praying for you. Make the song Dress Me in Your Armor your prayer and keep seeking God.